So, if you're on a Chromebook, you might have noticed that we've been getting a lot of updates lately from Google. For instance, you have an app store for Linux now, and you can play Steam games on Chromebook. You've also got touchpad gestures. But my favorite one of them all is click to call which supports if an Android phone's nearby, you can just click on the number and make a phone call. It's pretty awesome, yeah? Look, the point is there's a lot of updates and hidden settings that most people just are not aware of. But let's change that today. If you're new here, I'm Vamzi, and here are some of my favorite Chromebook tips and tricks in 2020. Let's begin. You can connect your Android phone from the connected devices section and unlock your Chromebook when your Android phone is near it. Just like how you can use Apple Watch to unlock your iPhone. Here, check this out. So open system settings and in the you and Google section, click on the screen lock and sign in option. Change the option to pin and password and set the pin. So every time you're using the Chromebook in the tablet mode, you can just press the pin to unlock. And not just that, you can sync open tabs from your Chromebook to your Android and vice versa. For example, if you're searching for something like say shoes on Amazon, you can seamlessly shift your browsing to Chromebook and take advantage of the bigger screen. To set it up, make sure you're logged into the same Google account on your Android and Chromebook. And then next, open up the Chrome app on your Android and tap on more option and then settings. Next, tap on your name, tap sync and then turn it on. This is something that you might already know that you can take a screenshot by just pressing the control plus overview button which has an icon of a rectangle with two lines and then the place of F5. But there's also another option to take a partial screenshot of just a certain portion of the screen. Just press control plus shift plus overview button. The screen will turn a bit darker. Just select the part of the screen you want to take a screenshot and then get a screenshot of just the portion you want. Since the day I bought my Chromebook, I've been watching Netflix and Prime videos on my browser. But turns out, I've been doing it all wrong. Instead of just watching Netflix and Prime videos on the browser, I would recommend you install their Android app for added features like VPN support and offline downloads. For example, simply download SmartDNS Proxy VPN and Netflix app from the Google Play Store and then log in. Next, you'll see a lot of VPN servers. So the trick here is to try different combinations to see which one works at the moment. Like this one, turn it on, make sure the smart VPN is selected, and now go back to the Netflix app, refresh, search for the Office US, and there you go. I can not only play it, but I can also download it. Once the download is finished, I can disconnect my internet, disable the smart DNS proxy VPN, and watch it offline. I mean, we all know that Chromebook can run Android apps, but some Chromebooks can even run Linux. But you have to make sure that your Chromebook is compatible with Linux first. To enable it, open System Settings and then click on the Turn On button beside Linux. You'll get a helpful terminal in your app drawer which will be helpful to install Linux apps. Now, how do you install any Linux app? Well, simply open the terminal and run the command sudo apt get install genome software genome package kit and you'll get the app store for Linux apps. Now, you can install apps like GIMP, which is the closest alternative to Photoshop. In fact, in the future, rumor has it that Steam will come directly to Chromebooks because Google and Valve are working closely on that. So instead of having to go through Linux to install your you know, Steam app and play your games, you can just directly install it. Now that you can run Linux on Chromebook, you can use the Linux app called Wine to run Windows on your Chromebook. To install it, open the terminal and run the command sudo apt get install wine. Wine will not only work on Intel based Chromebooks but also on ARM based Chromebooks. Wine is also available as an Android app which can be installed on any Chromebook and works perfectly, but it can only run Windows RT apps. So Chrome OS 80 beta or developer channels is going to be released to the public pretty soon. But if you're a Chromebook enthusiast like me, you should try it right now. By going to Chrome OS settings, about Chrome OS, additional details, change channel and set to beta or developer. Once you do that, you get some of these three nitty features like one, after the update, each quick settings page will only support six toggles and the remaining will be moved to the second page. 
This not only makes it easier to read notifications, but also helps to maintain a clean and consistent design. Another favorite feature is to click to call. For instance, I often search for address, customer care numbers, etc. on Google. And with the new click to call feature, you can automatically place a call on supported Android phones when you tap on the number on your Chromebook. Finally, with Chrome OS 80, you can directly sideload apps from the other websites as Google is going to add package installed programs to Chromebook. Before this update though, you can't really do it unless you're in the developer channel. Another one of my favorite features that was recently added is the widget. Now you can add your favorite app widgets onto the home screen like you can do with Windows or Android. First, make sure your Chromebook is updated to the latest stable build, that is Pi Android 9, by going to the Chrome OS settings, about Chrome OS, and check for updates. Next, open the Google Play Store on your Chromebook and install the Taskbar app and then open it. And then click on the Advanced Features menu and enable both Replace Home Screen and Widget Support options. Once done, go to the main menu and enable the Taskbar toggle on the top right corner. A new ribbon menu would appear at the bottom left corner, so tap on that and then move to the grid menu. On this screen, you can select your choice of widgets and it will start appearing on your home screen. Chromebooks come with three finger swipe gestures for tap switching and overview, but you can also get more touchpad gestures with simple Chrome flag. Simply go to Chrome flags on your Chromebook and type in the following URL, chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags forward slash hash enable virtual desks gestures. Once enabled, restart the browsers and now you can swipe four fingers in the left or the right direction to switch between virtual desktops. Well, there's more. Go to Chrome flag again and enable pull to refresh gesture using this URL, Chrome flags pull to refresh. And again, now you can swipe two fingers down to refresh the web page. So those were some of our favorite tips and tricks to make the most out of Chromebook. But the bigger picture here though, is that Google is actually giving proper laptop features to Chromebook, which normally feels like an iPad. Vamsi likes that. What else does Vamsi like? Smart DNS proxy, cause it only costs about five bucks a month and it gives you access to geo-restricted content like, you know, Pandora, Netflix, Disney Plus now, which is brand new. We've made tons of videos on those if you're new here, so click on one of the YouTube cuts to watch them. And as always, I'm Vamsi, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, or oh, maybe in five seconds? See ya. Oh, if you're still here, we're doing a Q&A for the first time on SmartDNS Proxy for our subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, you can still do it. Do it by saying hashtag AskSDP in the comment section below. Let us know some of your favorite or frequently asked questions and I'll let you know in the next video in the 25K special. I'll see you.